Hello and welcome, my name is William. Today I want to take some time and talk about the lowest common ancestor problem. The lowest common ancestor problem, also just abbreviated as LCA, is the problem of finding the deepest node C in a tree that has both node A and node B as descendants, where a node can be a descendant of itself. For example, in the tree on the left, the LCA of 5 and 4 is 2, since 2 is an ancestor of both 5 and 4. However, node 2 is not only just an ancestor of 5 and 4, it is also the common ancestor which is furthest away from the root node, hence the lowest common ancestor. The lowest common ancestor problem is found in numerous places in computer science, most notably when trying to find the distance between two nodes, in inheritance hierarchies for object-oriented programming, and inside the subroutines of several advanced algorithms and data structures. It's also worth mentioning that while in this video we're going to be covering finding the lowest common ancestor for trees, there's also the notion of a lowest common ancestor, but for directed acyclic graphs. Let's have a closer look at what the lowest common ancestor is to make sure that we're both on the same page. I'm going to show you pairs of nodes and you're going to try and find which node in the tree is the lowest common ancestor. All right, here we go. So what is the lowest common ancestor of 13 and 14? I'll give you a moment to figure it out. In this example, the lowest common ancestor would be node 2. You can see that if you were to walk up the tree from node 14 and node 13, that node 2 would be the first node that they have in common. What about the lowest common ancestor of node 9 and node 11? That would be node 0. What about the lowest common ancestor of node 12 and node 12? The lowest common ancestor of node with itself is itself. I should also mention that you can find the lowest common ancestor of not only two nodes, but of many nodes if you wish. All you need to do is combine the result of multiple LCA queries together. For example, the lowest common ancestor of 10, 12, and 16 is 2. In terms of algorithms for finding the LCA of two nodes, there are a diverse number of popular algorithms to choose from. Today we're going to cover how to find the LCA using the Eulerian Tor and range minimum query method. The Eulerian Tor method can answer LCA queries in constant time and only requires n log n preprocessing when using a sparse table to do range minimum queries. However, with an optimization, the preprocessing time can be brought down to linear time, which would make the Eulerian Tor method asymptotically optimal, which is pretty much as good as it gets. All right, so before we dive into the Eulerian Tor algorithm itself, there are a few housekeeping things to go over. First, you want to make sure you're dealing with a rooted tree. Otherwise, the concept of a lowest common ancestor doesn't really make sense because there's no orientation. The tree on this slide is already rooted. The tree on this slide is already rooted, so we're good on that aspect. The next thing you want to do is ensure that all nodes are uniquely indexed. This is important so that there's a mechanism to reference nodes later on. The tree on this slide is not currently indexed, so let's go ahead and index all our nodes. One easy way I like to index my nodes is by assigning each node a unique ID between 0 and n-1 inclusive. All you need to do is traverse the tree in any manner and label the nodes. Alright, now that we're done with the housekeeping stuff, we can start talking about the Eulerian Tor algorithm. As you might have guessed, the Eulerian Tor method begins by finding an Eulerian Tor around the edges of the tree. Rather than doing an Eulerian Tor on the white edges of our tree, we're going to do an Eulerian Tor on a new set of imaginary green edges which wrap around the tree. This ensures that the Tor visits every node in the tree. What we're going to do is start 
an Eulerian tor, also known as an Eulerian circuit, at the root node, traverse all the green edges, and finally return to the root node. As you do this, keep track of which nodes you visit, and this will be the nodes along the Eulerian tor. As an example, the Eulerian tor for the top left tree is 0102320, because we start at node 0, go down to node 1, go back up to node 0, go down to 2, down to node 3, back up to 2, and back up to 0 where we started. Feel free to pause the video and try and figure out why the tree on the upper right has the Eulerian tor that it does. As we build our tor, we're also going to want to keep track of some additional information. This additional information will be useful when it comes time to do lowest common ancestor queries. Two things we're going to keep track of are first, the depth of all the nodes in the Euler tor, and second, a pointer to each node based on its index in the Euler tor. This is so that we can reference nodes later on. While we are visiting the nodes for our Euler tor, we're also going to store the depth according to the dotted lines on this slide. All nodes on the first layer get a depth of 0, all nodes on the second layer get a depth of 1, and all nodes on the third layer get a depth of 2, and so on. As you'll see shortly, keeping track of the depth of each node serves as a critical role in how we're going to find the lowest common ancestor. We're going to start the Eulerian tor at the root node, and every time we visit a node, we track its depth in the depth array and store a pointer to the current node in the nodes array. So on this slide, node 0 at index 0 in the Euler tor has a depth of 0, which is arguably not too interesting. Next, node 1 at index 1 in the Euler tor has a depth of 1. Let's keep going. After that, we have node 3 at index 2 in the Euler tor with a depth of 2. And then we wrap around back to node 1, which has an index of 3 in the Euler tor and a depth of 1. This process continues until we're back at the root node. I'll let the animation play and you try and follow along. Now that we've built the Euler tor and tracked some additional information about it, how can we use that information to find the lowest common ancestor of two nodes? In this next example, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process on how to do that. Let's use nodes 5 and 6, highlighted in pink, as an example. The first step is to find the index position of our two nodes in the Eulerian tor. In this example, nodes 5 and 6 map to the index positions 7 and 10 in the tor. Then the second step is to find the index of the minimum value in the range obtained in step 1. So if we query the index of the minimum element in the range 7 to 10 inclusive, then we get the index 9 circled in green with a value of 1. Now, with index 9 found in the previous step, we can retrieve the lowest common ancestor by looking at index 9 in the nodes array. Alright, so to recap what we just did. First, we found the index position of the two nodes 5 and 6 in the Eulerian tor, which gave us the range 7 to 10. Then, in the depth array, we query the index of the minimum element in the range 7 to 10. Finding the index of the minimum element between the two indices 7 to 10 finds the node with the smallest depth along the path of nodes between the two indices in the Eulerian tor, which you will remark is always the lowest common ancestor. Then, with the index obtained in step 2, we can retrieve the LCA from the nodes array. All right. If you recall in step one, we saw that we needed to find the index position of a node. However, this isn't always clear for all nodes. What about nodes which have multiple visits? I glossed over this issue in the previous example because you'll notice that all leaf nodes have a unique index position. 
since they are only visited once. The problem comes down to the fact that there are two n minus one index positions in the Eulerian tor and only n nodes in total in our tree. So a perfect one-to-one -one inverse mapping isn't possible. For example, the inverse mapping of node one could map to either index one or index three in the Euler tor. Similarly, the inverse mapping for node two can map to either index five, nine, or 11 in the Euler tor. So which index values from the Eulerian tor should we pick if we were asked to find the LCA of the nodes one and two? It turns out that it doesn't matter. Any inverse index value will do. However, in practice, I find that it's easiest to select the last encountered index while doing the Eulerian tour. The reason the selection of the inverse index mapping doesn't matter is that it doesn't affect the value obtained from the range minimum query in step two. Suppose that for the lowest common ancestor query of nodes one and two, we were to select index one for node one and index nine for node two meaning the range between one and nine in the depth array when we're doing the range minimum query. Well, even though the range one to nine includes some nodes from the subtrees of nodes one and two, the depth of the nodes in those subtrees are always more than the depth of the nodes one and two. So the value of the range minimum query remains unchanged. You may think that querying a smaller interval would be faster, but we're going to be using a sparse table to do the minimum range query under the hood. So the time complexity remains constant either way. As I mentioned earlier, another piece of information we want to track is the inverse mapping between each node and its Eulerian Tor index. Since we are only going to be saving the last encountered index position for each node, I'm naming the inverse map last. All right, we're going to do an Eulerian tour just like before, but this time we're also going to keep track of the last occurrence of each node in the last array. I'm going to let the animation play and you try and follow along. So that was the Eulerian Tor lowest common ancestor algorithm in a nutshell. Now let's have a look at some pseudocode on how it's implemented. First off, I'm going to define a tree node class which has two members. The first is a unique index associated with the tree node so that we can easily reference it. And after that, a list of pointers to the child tree nodes of this tree node. Before we can start doing lowest common ancestor queries, we need to do some pre-processing, and this is handled by the setup function. The setup function takes as input the number of nodes in the tree and a pointer reference to the tree's root node. First, allocate some memory for the nodes and the depth array, and also initialize the last map. This is the map that maps node indices to Eulerian tor indices. Next up, we actually want to do the Eulerian tor around the tree to populate our arrays. This is handled by the depth for search method, which we will take a look at soon. And lastly, initialize a min sparse table data structure to do range minimum queries on the depth array. Sparse tables take n log n time to construct and do range minimum queries in constant time. If you want to learn more about sparse tables, consider watching my video on how to construct and query sparse tables from my data structure series. The depth first search method is the one that actually performs the Eulerian tour. As parameters, it takes the current node and the depth of the node. When the current node becomes null, we know that we have reached our base case and can return. Otherwise, visit the current node and iterate over all its children recursively. The inner visit function call is interesting. What it says is, after visiting the subtree, revisit the current node. 
This is essential to get the desired Eulerian tour effect to traverse the tree as expected. The visit function is responsible for populating the arrays associated with the Eulerian tour each time we visit a node. In particular, this function will update the nodes array to keep track of the pointer to the current node. It will also update the depth array to track the current depth, and it will also update the inverse mapping to the Eulerian tour index. All right, and now the moment you've been waiting for the lowest common ancestor method. The lowest common ancestor method takes as input two indices, index one and index two, for the nodes we want to find the LCA for. The first thing we want to do is look inside our last map. This finds the indices in the Eulerian tor associated with the nodes index one and index two. From these values, we can extract a left and a right endpoint. To make sure that the left endpoint always appears before the right endpoint, take the min and max of the two indices. After we know the left and the right endpoints, simply do a range minimum query to find the index of the minimum element in the range L to R inclusive. We do this using the sparse table we created in the setup method. And lastly, return the tree node object for the lowest common ancestor found in the nodes array. Awesome, well that's all for this video. I hope you learned something. Please like this video and subscribe for more mathematics and computer science content.